Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and today we are talking about, today we're talking, today we're talking about ENFP in love. Yeah, we're talking about ENFPs because I've had lately the support of some ENFP friends of mine. Uh, it's Becca from the Discord community and from uh, one of my close ENFP friends and I just want to say I really appreciate you and you are amazing. And today's question is just about what ENFPs are like in love. And the question is, do ENFPs love people too much? Yeah. So ENFPs are known for this indominatable willpower. You are incredibly enthusiastic and you have the power to make dreams come true. And as one of the four idealist types, you are also known for quite the big heart. So, can you love people too much? Can you be too forgiving? Are you sometimes attracted to dark and twisted people? And do you think love can solve all problems? I made this video as a discussion and I don't know the full answer to this question. It's just one that I've been wrestling, one that I've been thinking about. Because what I've seen is ENFPs are incredible when it comes to just seeing the best in everyone. ENFPs, as an INFJ, you make me feel accepted for who I am. You are these fierce individualists. You see and respect everyone for who they are. and. Uh, you make me feel respected and appreciated for who I am. And I think you really believe in the power of the individual and in everyone's power and everyone's inherent goodness. However, I can worry for you because I see you sometimes give so much of yourself in relationships. I see you pour your heart into people. I see you work so hard to love and care for and support others. And sometimes I worry that you're not getting enough in return. I think you believe that love can solve all problems. And sometimes I believe that your love can cure any evil. You can make bad people good. You can be the beauty and the person who cures the beast. However, just because you can does not mean that you should. And just because you have that power, even if you do have that power, does that mean that you have to use that power? So what I want to do is I want to make sure that you see and love yourself fully. And what that means is you are aware of what energies you let into your life and you are attentive uh, to, present of what you expose yourself to and what you have to endure and what you have to give up in order to love or cure another person. What price are you prepared to pay for the sake of being somebody's healer? What, what are you prepared to go through or endure just for the sake of turning a bad man good or turning the bad girl into a good girl, you know? <laughs> So, first of all, I want you to know that you are truly amazing types. You are not a curse or a problem. You are not a weight on anybody. You are talented, resourceful, compassionate, good-hearted, and you give energy and you make people feel good just by being in your presence. You have this amazing power and I don't want you to feel like you're too much or that you uh, put too much on others or that you, uh, your love or your kindness or your compassion is more than what it should be or that it's uh, something you need to restrain or hold back in yourself. I say this because I want to make sure that you never over idealize other people because I believe that when people have insecurities about themselves, when people worry about things in themselves, like if you're too much or if you are not good enough or if you uh, are too clingy or whatever it is, you know, I think those insecurities can lead to a tendency to over-idealize other people because if you're not good enough or if you have a false perception of your lack of worth, 
that can also lead to a false perception of the worth of other people. So you can over exaggerate the good qualities in a bad person, or you can uh, blind yourself to problems or red flags or issues another person has just because you are supposed to love them, right? You're supposed to see the good in them, you're supposed to see the good in everyone. But just because you want to see the good in everyone doesn't mean that you have to, you're not obliged to, you're not forced to. Your love needs to be given freely just because it's there. It should never be forced or pressured because you feel that you need to give it in order to change or help or support another person. Sometimes uh, when I meet up with ENFPs, I am bombarded with questions about psychopaths. And I'm always surprised by this. Like, what is this, this fascination with psychopaths? Why do ENFPs have this curiosity, this morbid curiosity in dark and twisted people? Uh, it's like, yeah, it's like a dangerous curiosity. And it's an interesting one. And I think I believe that, I believe that ENFPs know that they are incredible healers. I think you know that you have this power to make people around you feel good. I think you know that you have this power to make people smile. You have this charm, you have this ability to make people around you la let loose, laugh, you know. You can um, really encourage or support just about anyone. And I think uh, you believe that uh, you're such powerful healers that you can somehow turn this most villainous, dark psychopath into a good, mushy, kind sweetheart. I think you can, uh, I think you believe that you can marshmallowify anyone. So the question is, are you capable of changing another person? Can you teach another person to love? Can you turn a dark person good? Can you bring out the good in people? Can you cure darkness and evil in the world one person at a time? Mm, I don't, I believe that even if you can, even if you could, I don't think you should. And I don't think it's worth the price if that means that you as an ENFP has to put yourself in the face of hurt and toxicity and uh, people that use or manipulate you. I don't think you as an ENFP deserve to uh, dim your own light or to uh, expose yourself to such people just for their sake. So I want to say, please try not to do that. Instead, try to direct yourself and your energy and attention inwards. Try to figure out in yourself why you find an interest in these kind of people and I don't think it's that uh, because you can sometimes say that we attract what we're not we sometimes feel a draw or a pull to the things that we lack or uh, the things that we don't have so I think that uh, we need some degree of reframing here I don't think that it is necessarily that you are attracted to the dark or evil in these people I think maybe what you like about them or what attracts you to them is that they like themselves. You know, because a psychopath or a narcissist does not see themselves as dark or twisted. And even if they did, they wouldn't see any problem with it. Narcissism is basically the only incurable diagnosis because a narcissist does not believe there is anything that needs to be cured. They love themselves, they appreciate themselves, they see themselves as the most important people in the room all the time. And I think ENFPs can admire that. Somebody that believes fully in their own self-worth. I think also that as an ENFP that sometimes can feel that you love people too much or that people around you are not receptive to your love. You know, ENFPs can feel rejected all the time because you show your heart, you open up to other people and they're like, what do you want? <laughs> they're, they're like, stop telling me that. You compliment me too much. I don't believe it. 
You know, a lot of people out there react to ENFPs and because you're not prepared to love yourself, you know, it's very hard when an ENFP shows up and it's like, hey, you're awesome. And you're like, no, I'm not, you know, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's difficult to be an ENFP. But I think when you meet a narcissist or a psychopath, it's like, hey, this person likes themselves. So if you like them and if you share, show love to them, they're like, hey, thanks. That's awesome. Somebody that finally sees how awesome I am, you know. So they 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 appreciate that stuff. Uh, they want as much as possible of it. Just shine more light on me. Just appreciate me more. Just care for me more. Just give me all your energy, all your enthusiasm, all your support. Thanks, you know. <laughs> but when you deal with, you know, as an ENFP, when you deal with, you know, highly sensitive, authentic artists, you know, NFs, you know, people that uh, are starting out in life, you know. Most of those people, most HSPs, most artists out there, they're young, they're in insecure, they don't like themselves, they don't like their art, they don't like their work, they don't think they're talented, they don't believe in themselves, you know. So when you're an ENFP and you're around those people, it's like they're fascinating, but they keep shutting me out, they keep disappearing on me, they keep going into themselves, they don't, uh, they're not there, they're not available, they don't pick up the phone, they're uh so lost in their own darkness that as you as an ENFP you're like shut out so it's not easy uh it's hardest to love the people that are the most worthy of love uh that don't believe that they're worthy of love you know so so let's talk about the final question can ENFPs love too much I think many ENFPs have been taught that their love is too much. You give too many compliments, you're too appreciative, you're too positive, no person could possibly be that enthusiastic about everything, you know. Uh, you need to play it cool, you need to restrain yourself, you can't just hug any stranger you see. You can't befriend every ship monk on the road. I mean, those creatures, they're dirty, you know. <laughs> so, I think it can be hard because uh, yeah, um, you're constantly taught this lesson and uh, I don't think you want to buy it. I don't think you want to believe it. I don't think you want to believe that your love is too much or that your energy could possibly be something bad because you see how people light up when they appreciate it. You can see that when people are open, up or open to it, you can see that uh, it's a positive influence on people. You can see that you make people happy by being the way you are. So. How can people say it's too much, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I know also that a lot of ENFPs are attracted to INFJs uh, and INTJs. But, you know, many of us, at least INFJs, we're stuck in introverted thinking loops. And we're so obsessed with fixing ourselves and working on ourselves and criticizing ourselves. You know, we're uh, basically carrying around this under development sign all the time. And, you know... Because we believe that we are under development, that means also that we believe that, yeah, we're not worthy of you, you know. We, I think a lot of INFJs have that energy, like, we're not worthy of you, ENFPs, yet. Maybe one day we will be, you, we just have to work a little bit more on ourselves, you know. We just have to spend a little more, bit more time, a little bit more energy on ourselves. And maybe one day we will be ready for you, I don't know. I hope so. <laughs> I hope that uh, um, over time, you know we'll get out of it and we'll learn to see good in ourselves and that we're prepared to say, okay, I'm done. I'm good. I'm ready. You know, I, I hope that. Uh, so I get that it can be difficult to be so compassionate and so caring for people that do not want to feel cared for or people that do not want to appreciate themselves. So, to love somebody like that is to feel rejected. But even if that's not our intention, like we're not trying to reject you, it's not that we don't appreciate your love. It's just that we have not learned to receive it yet, you know? So yeah, we just have to learn to start receiving you better. I don't think you need to start working on sending out less or being less you. I think we need to work on being more open to you. And uh, the problem is, I think, you have not learned to receive love either. Honestly, I think ENFPs, uh, they believe that they have all this energy inside them and that they don't need it from other people. I don't need 
love from other people. I don't need people to care for me because I have so much love in myself already. You know, I think ENFPs have that sometimes, but I, I want you to know that that's not true. And there's a reason why ENFPs struggle with feelings of emptiness or why ENFPs can often feel lost, you know, because as much as you can feel and, you know, in your happiest faces, like, oh, everything is great. Everything is rainbow and sunshine. Sometimes you are running from things. Sometimes there are things you don't want to face in yourself. Sometimes there's doubts. And sometimes that energy, that social battery runs out. Even for you, that battery runs out, you know. And sometimes you just don't feel that. You don't feel that energy. You don't feel like you are the cheerleader, you know. Because, yeah, manic pixie dream girls, they don't exist, you know. Manic pixie dream boys, you don't exist either. Um, you're just as sad and twisted and lonely and lost as the rest of us can be sometimes you're happy sometimes you're sad sometimes just like the rest of us so yeah you need love too and i think you need to learn to receive just as infjs need to learn to receive and uh, people say that because enfps have introverted feeling they're so self-absorbed and they're already so self-accepting and self-loving you know but that's not true at all that's not what introverted feeling means Introverted feeling does not mean that you automatically love yourself. That's not how it works. It's just a function that gets you to appreciate individuality, to care for ethics, to care for saying and being honest and doing the right thing. You know, that's what it means. It does not mean you love yourself. It does not mean you're self-absorbed. Yeah. Uh, learning to love yourself is a long process. And my last advice is don't rush it. I mean, I know you're extroverted. I know you want to get to the finish line. You want to get the three kids. You want to get the dog. You want to get the house. You want to get married. You want to get all those things fixed, put together, you know, done. Uh, immediately. Preferably before you're 21. Uh, but try not to rush it. Love is never late nor early. It just is. You can't love someone too much or too little. You can just love. Other people don't have to accept all the love or see what you see just yet. They just have to see a little bit of it. And you don't need all the love all the time. You just need love. Still, I want to say I appreciate you for trying and for being you. And I'm grateful for all the help you guys offer me and the support that you give on this channel and all the wonderful comments that you leave all the time. And... Uh, so my questions for you are, what do you think? Do you think that ENFPs love too much? And do you think that there is a truth that ENFPs can sometimes be attracted to uh, evil people? And what do you think ENFPs can do to find true and meaningful love? Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.